Now, we can, I think, spend the whole day speaking about all the problems um, that need to be addressed with, with gang culture in Cape Town, but like you said earlier in this interview, I think it's more important to focus on the solutions and yeah. what can be done. Yeah. Now, you've outlined um, some solutions for, for us here. What do you think the, the easiest step is for, for government, for everyday citizens to take when it comes to addressing gang culture? Uh, you've narrowed it down to what the government and, and people should take. There's the, the solutions are not rocket science. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's what I need to start by saying. It's, it's not that difficult. We need to have the will as a city, as a country, to address these things and, and unpack them one at a time to, to find out where the problem is. And, you know, if, if you want to... I'll start in a very strange place. We ought to support pregnant mothers in their pregnancy and in their postnatal years. And, and, and I'll tell you why it was a shock to me to arrive at that place as part of the solutions. And the reason is that, that, that making a baby is a chemical process. If mothers are malnourished or if they drink or if they take drugs, mm -hmm. that is being communicated into a fetal uh, uh, process of development. Now, epigenetics is a very new science, and I didn't think I'd have to get into epigenetics, and I had to read so much. Uh, I spent months and months just reading epigenetics. Fortunately, I, I have a bit of a background in, in science journalism, so it didn't absolutely floor me, but it's complicated. But what the, the situation is, if I dare describe it to you, is that the, the DNA is ancient embedded knowledge from which knowledge is made taken by the RNA to make a life. But the situation around the, the DNA is called the epigene, and that is a protein formation process that takes that information and it makes an eye, makes an, you know, an arm, ma makes things. You haven't completely lost me, so that's great. Well, that's, You're doing that, a very good sure. job at explaining. Okay. <laughs> um, and and it's, it's, not, it's complicated, but it's not complicated. Um, nobody really quite realized until very recently that the influences from outside, from the environment, which is the mother, and, and the world outside the mother, actually influence that, that transcription process. And so um, the, the, what the, the process is saying is life is very dangerous. It's going to be rough. You've got you've to learn, even as a fetus, to handle this. So the chemical process is a brain. It, things change in the brain. You have a over too much, well, a lot of dopamine to handle fight and yeah. flight. You have not enough serotonin because there's always a balance. And serotonin is your prefrontal cortex, which is take it easy, think about this, delayed um, um, gratification. So kids are, are coming out ready to handle a rough world. And that translates very often in teenage years into violence. So I'm looking at violence and I'm trying to go backwards and backwards and I'm getting to prenatal stuff in epigenetics just in order to understand why there's so much violence in the city. And so, you know, one of the kind of take-home ideas from that is, is that, 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 that gangs are also part of a health problem in the city. It, it's a, it, so, so one of my solutions is we have to have nurse visits, we have to have mothers knowing what to do. A third, uh, a third I think, a th no, half of the births in the city are to single mothers. These are desperate young girls who don't know how to be pregnant, don't know how to look after a kid. When that child comes out, they don't know to that attachment process. You know, the, the epigene is so fluid that love changes the genetic structure of a child. Wow. A mother loving it or not loving it changes the way that kid is actually being developed. And that goes on for quite a few years after birth. So, I mean, there's a whole area I could get in, I could take the whole how I'm talking about epigenetics, but there are other stuff as well. And the other thing is fathers. Uh, you know, a third of kids are growing up without fathers in this country. And, and a young man who doesn't have a father, what's he got? He doesn't have a role model, but worse than that, he has shame. He couldn't have loved me. He didn't love me. I'm angry inside. I'm feeling ashamed. I'm going to make quite sure that I make you respect me because I don't fully respect myself. So I've got to externalize it like that. So the absence of fathers and the, the difficulty of mothers is my starting place for trying to understand what to do about gangs. Train, teach, help fathers to be fathers. We don't have enough father. We don't know how to father. I mean, I had kids. What did I know about how to be a father? I didn't have a clue. 
Uh, it wasn't part of my school curriculum. It wasn't part of my life. Nobody said this is how you do it. Others are the same. Yeah. So that you know, uh, that's that's part of the solutions. But you know, if you go further, you have to revitalize neighborhoods. The, you know, it's starting with the group areas. You, you neighborhoods were destroyed. Um, the, 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 the grandparents went one direction, the aunts went another, you got a nuclear family situation, the family breaks, you've got single parent family. That whole, that stuff, uh, kids end up in the streets. They look for surrogate families in the streets and they find each other. So gangs are also surrogate families. They are, they are kids attempting to re-family themselves and re-father themselves and refine yeah. themselves. It's not difficult to understand. But it is useful because that we, we, can, we can plug solutions into that place. We, we do know how to do that.